All right, so what we are talking about now is to get something that is not in slope-intercept form into slope-intercept form so that I can graph it. I have four problems on this worksheet that are not in slope-intercept form that just need to be solved. Now, these are the steps for getting something into slope-intercept form. The first thing we want to do is add or subtract the number that is in front of the x, or not the number in front of the x, but the x term itself, and make sure not to combine it on the other side. For instance, a 3x cannot be combined with a 2. So you can't put those guys together. And that is a big mistake that I see a lot of people still doing. So don't combine those unlike terms. And then after the x is gone, we want to divide by whatever number happens to be in front of the y. We will have to make sure we divide everything and leave the slope as a fraction. So make sure that we will do those. There is one additional thing that is necessary for you to remember this is an inequality and when we solved inequalities before it is important that when we divide by a negative number when we divide by a negative number we must flip the sign around. So if I have at the beginning a less than symbol and during the process of solving I end up dividing by a negative number I must flip that less than symbol around to be a greater than symbol. All right, so make sure we don't forget that. I kind of made these notes a little bit important. Yes, we're going to do a problem, don't worry. All right, so the first thing we are going to do is just a simple example of getting y by itself, number 10. I want to do number 10 because it requires both the subtraction and the division. If we look up at the directions again, the first step is to add or subtract the x term. So what am I going to get rid of first? Minus, six. Minus, not just 6, but 6x. Six X. Write it down underneath the problem. That way you can keep it nice and organized. That's going to cancel it out, and it's going to go away, and the x's are no longer over there. What is over there, though? A 5y. There is a greater than or equal to symbol. And what is this stuff? Good. We cannot do this, so you must bring them down. That is a negative 6x and a positive 15. You do not put them together. We do not say 15 minus 6 is 9x. That's not right. You can't combine them. They're unlike terms. Are there any questions about that? All right. Now, what does step 2 say to do? Divide by the number in front of the y, and in this case, it's a 5. So it's pretty much the exact same thing with the greater than or Exactly. Yeah, it is exactly the same with the greater than or equal to symbol. Now, we have to remember to divide everything by 5. And you can do the big fraction bar, or you can do the uh, like individual 5s. And I think this kind of shows it a little clearer that we're dividing everything. But the big fraction bar is totally fine as well. So what is going to show up on the left over here? Y. Yeah, the, just the Y. Did I divide by a negative number? Yes. What is that? No, that's a positive 5. So do I flip the sign around? No. No, the sign stays the same. I did not divide by a negative, so I don't flip the sign. Negative 6, is that dividable by 5? Can I divide no. 6 by 5? No. I would get like 1.2 or something like that. Yeah. So we want to leave it as a fraction, which would be the negative 6 fixed. X plus... Thank you, George. 3? 15 divided by 5 is 3. Okay? We've got to make sure that we're dividing everything by 5. Now, this is y by itself. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, is it 6x or both negative 6 and 5 is x? Because you just put the x right there. Uh, okay, this technically is negative 6 fifths times x. An x is not with the 5 as well as with the 6, it's after. You could have written this as negative 6x oh, okay. over 5, but that's not usually how the slope is written. Usually it is a fraction in front of the x. It makes it a little bit clearer what the rise and the run is. So we write it as negative 6x, or negative 6 fifths x. And that would be the answer to this problem. All we need, all, uh, on this section, there is no graphing. It's just solving. The next section, which I'm about to do, is a graphing problem. So you want to do 9, 11, and 12? Oh, no, you will do 9, 11, and 12. I'm going to do a graphing problem right now. So the next section is just asking you to graph these. 
Now, I'm going to do number 16, which I think is the last problem on the page. And this one requires a couple things. I have to solve it. I have to state the direction of shading as well as the type of line and then graph it. What? The problem you just did, is that the exact same thing as 1 through 6? Uh, yes, 1 through 6, you do not have to solve for y. You just have to graph it. The 1 through 6 are just the last step of this. 1 through 6, they're already in this... Uh, what do you call this again? Slope intercept form. They're already in slope intercept form. Numbers okay. 9 through 12 are not yet in slope intercept form, so okay, we're yes. having to put them in the slope. Six, we graph it, and what else do we do? Else we graph, do? shade, and do the solid dotted line on 1 through 6. Now, number 16, we will need to first get it into slope intercept form, like Mr. Davidson was saying. We have to get y by itself. We follow the same steps. So, what is the first thing that I need to do? Minus the 6x. And when I subtract 6x from both sides, what's going to happen on the left? They're going to go away. What is going to be left over there on the left? On the, on the left side. Negative y, right? When the 6x's cancel out, it leaves me with a negative y. Don't forget the negative sign. Sometimes it's important to write a negative 1 there. That can help a lot of people. A negative 1y is less than or equal to... You want to write the x term first. While it's true, negative 5 minus 6x is the right thing to do. We want to write the x thing first, usually, because it's clear that that is... Slope intercept form, negative 6x minus 5. I like the x things first because then it shows me where the y intercept and the slope is a little bit more clear. You do not have to have it that way, but I'm telling you, you'll get it right more often when you graph it when it's that way. Does that make sense? From now, the next step that we would have to do to get y by itself is to get rid of what? The negative 1. I need to divide by the number in front of y. That's step two. So look back at the directions if you're having trouble with the steps. Negative one needs to go away, and I'm going to divide that. Making sure that I divide everything by a negative one. What happens to the negative ones here on the left? They cancel, leaving you y. Did I divide by a negative number? Yes. What do I have to do? Lift the sign. So it's not a less than symbol anymore. That's a greater than symbol. What is negative 6 divided by negative 1? Positive 6 over 1. Positive 6 over 1. X. What is negative 5 divided by negative 1? Negative 5. No. No. Positive 5. Positive 5. So this is negative, or sorry, positive 6 over 1. X plus 5. You have to have the over 1 in order for the graphing to take place. You have to have rise and run. It is not technically necessary to have it there, but it is very helpful with the graphing. When I divide by a negative number, I flip the sign. So yeah, a negative y value here in the original equation will necessarily cause you to flip the sign. Now, where do I start when I go to graph this equation? All right, so it tells me to go up 6 into the right one, but I can't do that. So I'm going to go down 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and to the left one. Now, I could go down another 6 and to the left another one, but that, again, is going to put me off the graph. But, you know, it might be useful to see where it's going to be heading. Now, we do have to tell me where or what type of line it is and the direction of shading. So a greater than symbol. Is that above or below the line? This greater than symbol. Above or below? Greater than up. Up, above. It has a line underneath it. It has a solid line, so is it going to be shade or a solid or a dotted line? Solid. A solid line. So we will draw this in as a solid line, and it's going to be really steep. A lot of people have trouble with really steep lines when determining where the shading goes. Are there any questions about the graph of the line part first? 
Now what we need to do is shade that. So we will need to be shading above this line. That's what it says here. So I will take any point and I will draw an arrow straight up. And when I draw that arrow up, it shows me the side that I need to be shading on. Whatever side the arrow is on is the side that's going to get shaded. So that's to the left of the black line. That's the above side. And this is the area that you shade. Are there any questions about how to determine which area you shade, especially on a really steep line like this one? No, sir. All right. Now I've done an example of the graphing as well as the solving. You need to finish up this worksheet. That is what your homework is, is to complete this. You still have another 18 minutes left of class. You should be able to get significantly through it. Wait, is it this thing? Yes.